Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some praise. He is more than wonderful. Oh, my God, God, God. Come on and praise the Lord right where you are, in your home, in, in your kitchen, in your living room, wherever you may be. Come on and give the Lord some praise right now because he is wonderful. He is wonderful. Matter of fact, he's more than wonderful. We don't have enough words to describe him. He is an awesome and mighty God. Hallelujah. And we bless and magnify his name today. Oh, my God. Thank you. Music and worship arts, Sister Tierra Furby and Brother Chris Tate. Oh, my God. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise for that. That's, that's what I needed to know. I needed to hear, and we glorify and magnify his holy and righteous name. We come again on this morning uh, to worship the Lord on this beautiful day and to honor him for his goodness and kindness to us. And we thank God for what he is doing in and through our lives. Another banner week, and the Lord has kept us and walked with us. And if you're able to be here in the land of the living on today, you ought to just give God just a crazy praise and tell God thank you. Wherever you are, in your home, in your car, maybe some of you may be at work, essential persons, you ought to just give God thanks and praise and glory and honor. And we thank God for what he is doing. Uh, since states reopened, 91,000 plus people. Uh, have died since states reopened. 91,000 plus people have died. And so we thank God for uh, the direction and consultation of our denominational leadership, uh, which seeks to, uh, first of all, preserve life and to keep us all safe. And so we thank God for the wisdom of the fathers and mothers of God in our bishops' council the AME Church around the world, we, our churches are still closed to public utilization uh, so that we can keep people safe. We are here, essential, all, everybody pretty much on the grounds, those few people that are here, essential workers, and so exercising necessary precautions, we bring you this live service. We thank God for his grace and his favor. Thank God for the ministries of the church and uh, to our worship leader, Reverend Crump, and our sister pastor at North, uh, Reverend Erica Barnes. We thank God for her leadership. Uh, Minister Rodney Taylor, we honor God for you and uh, your leadership. And all of us are, are, are quickly getting fast up to speed and even advancing in our capabilities of ministering to people virtually. And uh, so we thank God for uh, the work of music and worship arts and our AV ministry. Amen. That's doing a yeoman's job, a Herculean job. And uh, so come on, let's celebrate them and we celebrate. Amen. And uh, those who work on staff with me know that uh, I'm getting a little better. I used to want it uh, yesterday. Uh, now I just take it by the close of business. And uh, so they, but they do a fantastic job and I appreciate each and every one of them and thank God for our office team as well. And so we greet you in Jesus' joy today and there is a word from the Lord uh, in this season to help us to be ready for what God has called us to do in this season. You saw early on the announcements concerning, particularly concerning the census and also concerning voting. Uh, in Maryland, you have until October 13th, register to vote so that you can be able to vote. And so we thank God for that. Isn't he wonderful? He is wonderful. Uh, before we go to the decks, let me just extend um, uh, this personal pastoral administrative uh, responsibility. 
And it is certainly my privilege and pleasure to announce today uh, that the Reverend Reginald Crump is the new assistant pastor of the Brandywine campus. And so we thank God. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise today. Uh, we honor him for his faithfulness and for his leadership. Um, and a faithful brother, keep him in your prayers, and particularly uh, Pop Crump. We are certainly praying for him and asking God's blessings upon him. And we thank God for his healing power. And so we have leadership in place, uh, the impeccable leadership of Reverend uh, Erica Barnes at North Campus, assistant pastor there, assistant pastor here now, Reverend Crump, who is uh, just a, a faithful brother. He goes beyond the 100%. Uh, and I thank God for you, and we're praying uh, for your strength and health in the Lord as well. Caring for parents, uh, I know that journey, and so our prayers are with you. Uh, and we want to make sure that there is care for the caregivers uh, as well. So we bless the name of the Lord uh, for his goodness and kindness to us. Our Father, here we are on Sunday morning. Uh, your people need a word. Um, I heard your voice, um, but the, par the, 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 the paradox is and the dilemma is, is that your eternal word has to travel through a corruptible vessel like me. So I need your sanctifying power through only the Holy Spirit that you would send a fresh anointing, fresh wind, fresh oil, fresh fire. Let it fall upon me now. And I thank you for the opportunity to share your word this morning by live streaming through Facebook Live and prayer conference call and all the other mediums of Roku and Hulu and all of those others. God, most important, we just need to hear from you. Anoint my eyes to see, my ears to hear, my mouth to speak, and my mind to perceive the will of God and the word of God for your people at this hour. And after that, you've spoken your word, confirm your word with signs and wonders following, heal, save, deliver, and set free in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. Set this preacher's a flaming fire. Turn him loose and let him preach, and I'll be careful to give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen, amen and amen. Got up this morning, and uh, I felt uh, the communi communion of saints around the world. So I said, uh, let me I'm gonna put on my, my Indian robe and my Nigerian crown and, uh, and preach in an African Methodist Episcopal Church in America. So I'm, I'm feeling real kingdom today, real global. Uh, uh, and that's what this season has taught us. There is a word from the Lord in Isaiah chapter 43, 13, one verse. And then we're going to jump over to John 10. Uh, 27, and Connie, I'm going to take it 27 through 30. I put 27, 28, but I'm going to take it 27 through 30. Isaiah 43, chapter 13, uh, 40, 43 chapter, verse 13 in the New Living Translation, and here's what it says. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hand. No one can undo what I have done. Uh, go on over to the New Testament in John chapter 10 as we teach in Bible lesson, whatever you hear uh, spoken in the old, it is always echoed in the new. Listen to the echo from the very Son of God himself in John chapter 10, 27 through 30. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. 
And because they listen to my voice and because they follow me, I give them eternal life. And they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. For my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. And by the way, the Father and I are one. I started to make it a declaration, uh, speaking prophetically to you. But as I was meditating uh, yesterday, and uh, I called up one of the millennials, and I said, "Just I said, listen to these two titles and hear how you're hearing it." And and they said, "Well, either one works for me." I said, "But which one sounds better to the ear?" And, he, and they said, "Well, I like the personal one." I said, "That's the one I was leaning to. I was going to prophetically declare that would be right." you're in his hands, but I think it's better in pandemic, in the crisis that we're in, let's all come together to the text and declare for ourselves, I'm in his hands. Come on, come on, wherever you are in your home, just say, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in his hands. I'm I'm, I'm in his hands. I've, 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 I, I, I've not been able to attend funerals of family members that are in other states, but I'm in his hands. I'm concerned for family members that are in states where uh, COVID is increasing and spreading rapidly in Florida and Texas and California. And then somehow just six weeks comes about and all of a sudden everything that those, uh, other, those uh, would-be politicians, those would-be elected officials were saying six weeks ago, they have to now eat their words and finally concede that, yeah, if you wear a mask, you're going to be better off. Um, I'm praying for for uh, uh, the, the family of congregational uh, members of the church whose family members have been stricken and have died and they've not been able to go to the funeral because of what's going on. I'm praying for the family of Brianna Taylor. We, 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 we're still calling her name and the names of those that we need to call are far beyond the time and it would exhaust our time and so when we're in this kind of crippling pandemic hitting us in all kinds of ways and if things don't straighten out this weekend economically we'll be faced with another economic front in our lives and, but in the midst of all of that I just wanted to pause and encourage believers whose faith has gotten a little weak and maybe you've gotten a little weary and maybe you have almost wanted to give up and I needed to come on this Sunday morning to remind you believer to remind you, saints of God, that no matter what is coming your way, hell or high water, I want you to declare with the strength that God gave you this morning, I'm in His hands. I'm in, I'm in His hands. It, it, it is a bit unnerving to, to be in a situation that, that you don't have control over. Uh, uh, when uh, they, this thing first began to manifest, February and March and all of that, and then we started hearing these words that most people outside of military complex do not, are not accustomed to hearing the phrase shelter in place. Uh, 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 we, we started hearing words that those outside of uh, the barometer of that kind of experience, uh, and I've been in Colleen uh, three times when, because of tragedy, Fort Hood went into lockdown. It's when all of those iron steel gates start coming up and there is no way to enter the fort in any of the gates and defense condition is goes to the next level. And so, and so it's unnerving when we're in situations that we just can't control. Uh, uh, loved ones die in other states and if I go to that state... That means I'm going to have to quarantine 
for 14 days. I, I, I'm not used to that. And, and I remember one uh, person was sharing with me uh, that uh, as soon as they entered a particular state, a state trooper pulled them over uh, and, and gave them uh, the written instruction that now that you're here in this state because of where you have come from, we know your license plate, you're going to have to shelter and quarantine in this state. <laughs> and they were forced to be in a hotel uh, and, and situations you just you just can't control and and how many times have we consistently heard of the stories of loved ones in ICUs ventilators on and faithful health care workers standing there with phones and iPads and families on FaceTime saying goodbye to their loved ones so they would not have the tragedy of dying all by themselves. We've heard of the stories of nurses and even retired persons and doctors who flew to places of epicenter to give their service for those who were in need and found themselves being afflicted with this horrible disease and some eventually themselves dying trying to help somebody else in their life and these situations are beyond our control sometimes we get in this quandary I'm still there how you still there yeah I, I, I've got I've got Martin and Gandhi on the right as your right and I'm Jesus is in the middle, and um, uh, on the other side, I've got Bobby Seale and Huey Newton and, and, and Malcolm X, and, and, and so I'm in a quandary, but the text calls me uh, to be reminded about whose hands my life is in. <laughs> can, 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 you, can you say it just one more time? I'm in his hands. I mean, his hands. So, so uh, Jesus um, was always very good at helping us to understand out of all Scripture those things that we on this side of the Testament needed to have reemphasized to us. Uh, uh, he talked about the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, and Jesus brings it over to the New Testament. He says, let me give you just a quick and dirty summary. If you just do two things, love God and then love your neighbor just like you love yourself, you, you, you'll be all right. You, you'll get the commandments. And, and so whenever you see something that was spoken in the old and Jesus directly quotes it in the new, what he's saying to you is it was important then, but it's still important now. <laughs> and, and so encouched in this John chapter 10, which is the shepherd's chapter, and, uh, 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 Jesus is dealing with a myriad of things and he wants to make it clear who he's talking to because he's not talking to everybody. He, 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 now, now, now people may hear him but he, he, he understands that everybody's not listening. Uh, the, the, he's talking to the listeners and the listeners are the ones who not only have their ear in place but they've tuned their heart to hear what thus saith the Lord. And so you listen with your heart. He said my sheep are listening to my voice. And the only way you can listen is not just with your ear, you listen with your heart. Uh, you listen so that it enters and changes your space. He, he said, they listen with their heart, uh, and I know them. And that comes from that Greek word, intimus, where we get the word intimacy. Into me I see. And, 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 and I know them, and because I know them and they hear my voice, they follow me. And, and so you have to be careful, beloved. You have to be careful because in this day and in this age, there are a whole lot of folks who want you to follow them. And you have to be careful about the outcome of your following. They want you to follow their plan, their agenda, their vision, their order. Didn't Jesus said, he said, don't be a whole lot of folk coming and saying, I'm the one you've been looking for. Messiah's over here and false prophets over here and all kinds of voices in the world. But I want to remind people that know me, my sheep, my peeps, they know my voice. 
I know them. Yeah, I can spend a minute there. (laughs) Jesus knows us, but he loves us anyway. (laughs) Touch yourself and say, he loves me anyway. I can't tell you to turn and touch your neighbor because we ain't got a whole lot of neighbors here and we're exercising uh, social discipleship, not social distinction, social discipleship. Uh, So so, so just, just touch yourself and say, he loves me. You listen with your heart. He knows you and you follow him. And then here's the benefit for following him. If you ever want to know if it pays to serve Jesus, yes, it does. And in this case, John is dealing with the ethereal. Now, the other uh, uh, gospels deal with, you know, you'll get hundredfold houses, lands, brothers, father, wife, hundredfold, and you get persecution, then you get eternal life. John doesn't waste his time with that. John is probably financially secure. He owns a fishing company, him and his brother, and uh, they hadn't been back to work since they left Zebedee in the, in the boat fishing. And I guess all their bills and mortgage and everything is being paid. So, so, so John, John's not worried about all the stuff we're going to get on this side. John goes straight to it in verse 10, uh, 28. He says, I give them eternal life if, 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 because they listen to my voice and they follow me. Here's their gift. I give them eternal life. Uh, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. Now, you need to understand the, 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 the real essence definition of perish uh, means to die a violent and untimely death. That's why God so loved the world that what? He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should what? 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 Not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. They will never perish and so watch this no one can snatch them away from me and this, this is one of these texts i know people we think about jesus as you know that the little you know the little baby in a manger little cute cute sweet jesus this, this ain't the cute sweet jesus this, this the negro right here who's gonna braid a whip and gonna tear up the church temples he's gonna upturn the tables he's gonna whip the folks out the church this ain't the wimp jesus this ain't the chump jesus this ain't no punk here this, this, this is the jesus who is talking no and he knows watch this. He knows that the devil is listening in on the conversation. And so Jesus just says, well, let me just give this broadcast message so that everybody understands I'm giving them eternal life. They will never perish. I know, devil, you're trying to make them perish. You're trying to make them be afraid. And then Jesus says, no one can snatch them away from me. Now, now I, I need you to understand something. I, 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 know, I know you're up here in, in, in the suburbs and I, I know you, you, you know you become refined and got a few degrees and you know you've been to a few uh, symphonies or operas or whatever and you've experienced a fine life uh, but those of you who can remember Southeast, those of you who know things like South Dallas, so those of you who know things like Southside Chicago, I I, I, do I have a witness here? Jesus is talking some bad talk because he's standing on 79th Street in Chicago and he's saying no one can snatch them away from me. Yeah. Bad talk. That's bad talk. That's bad talk. And then he says, that was for the devil. Uh, he, then he says, for my father has given all of them to me. And guess what? He is more powerful than anyone else. Glory goes up to the Father. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. Well, maybe Jesus, I thought you just said no one could take them from your hand. Uh, now you're saying no one could take them to the Father's hand. Oh, by the way, this is called what we call the uh, associative property. Uh, they can't take him from my hand. They can't take them from the Father's hand. Oh, and by the way, the reason they can't do that is because I and the Father are one. Yeah. Now that you've got the backdrop of the text, just affirm with me again, I'm in his hands. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm in his hands. I am, I am a fan of the old action heroes, um, uh, Sylvester Stallone and Schwarzenegger and 
all the old guys, and so uh, some of the movies uh, like The Expendables and yeah, yeah, there, see, I'm that old gener, the older gen, yeah, yeah, I'm in that generation. Um, Chuck Norris, you know, yeah, yeah, all them, yeah, yeah, you know that. So, uh, and you got to have a new generation coming along, and um, um, and, and I've I've really grown to love. I, I didn't at first because I, I thought they, it, it was just a bit too much, but I've really grown to love the additional Rocky movies, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, and, 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 and Rocky Balboa, and then that is now transitioned into Creed. <laughs> Creed 1 and 2 with Michael Jordan. So, so, so in this pandemic, I have fallen again in, like, in love with that series and that narrative of champions and how one champion folds off the scene, but before he goes, he makes sure to impart unto the next generation what needs to happen. And so, and so beloved, if, you're, if we're not worried about what's going to happen in Georgia because John Lewis did such an amazing job. We've, we've got some young leaders that are already in the wings. And, and, and as those of us who are senior begin to step out of the ring, we remain in the corner of the new fighters that are in the ring. I just said something up in here. And, 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 and so I've, I've fallen in love with that series. And, and I watched it the other night with uh, uh, the, the Rocky movie when he was talking with his son. And his son was saying, I got a job because I, I, I have your name. I got a job because of who you are. I, I've gotten this open to me because of who you are. And I want to have my own name. And I want to be my own person. And I want to be able to make my own way. And, and I like Rocky because he still uses that boxing slur. In other words, if you know boxers who have been had constant blows to the head, their speech begins to slur. And he said, he, he, he says to his son, I remember you when you fit in the palm of my hand. I remember your life when it started. And I'm seeing you here today and and I'm admonishing you now. It's time for you to stand up and stop making excuses. You are already your own man. Thank God for what was provided. Your own man. But I remember you when you were in my hand. God does not have to look back and remember when we were in his hand because we still are in the hand of God. Yeah. Now, what's that mean, Reverend? I'm glad you asked. Can't give you three things, we'll go to the house. I'm in his hand. He's in front of me. <laughs> he, he, he's, he's where? He's in front of me. If I'm, if I'm in his hand, and I'm looking through the fingers. He's, his fingers are in front of me. So uh, if I'm trying to move forward because I'm in his hand, everywhere his hand moves, his hand and his fingers are in front of me. That I, I want you to get the image of that, that you're in his hand. So wherever you go, he, he is in front of you. And what does it mean when God is in front of you? That he already knows what's coming on the road in front of you. He, he already is where you have not yet gone. He, he already sees what you have not seen. He, he is already aware of what's coming down the road. And so he is in front of you. Now, if you try to disobey, and as we have sometimes have experienced, and we want to jump out of his hand and do it our own way then God says all right you go on and try this without me but I'm still connected to you but since you don't appreciate me holding you in my hand let me let you feel what it's like to have to move through life uncertain at what's around the next corner oh I don't know about you but I'd rather stay in the hand of God because God knows what's in front of me. He knows what's getting ready to happen in my life and in the life of so many. I read the article the other day that chronicled 
the 91,000 that have died since states have reopened. And I thought that 91 was real interesting because we started this whole series in Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord what? He is my refuge and my strength. And, and, and the article featured young African-American sister, an Episcopal priest, with her robes on and serving communion, who had died in these last days since states had reopened. And I know a lot of folks would want to say all oh, this and that and other about the faith, but the reality is saints die too. The, 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 the difference is when you've already been born again, <laughs> That the death of the physical body has no control over our eternal destiny. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's the difference. And, and so they were picturing this Episcopal priest, the black woman. I can't recall her name. And as I begin to read the article, I came to understand something. That because God is in front of me, it doesn't mean that I will not be translated out of this world. It just means that when it's time for me to cross over. He is already my bridge over troubled water. He has already gone ahead of me. With that confidence, uh, that's why our foremothers and fathers could sing songs while they were in uh, the fields picking cotton. They would sing songs like Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Coming forward to carry me home because I know he's in front of me. I can have the confidence that no matter what I have to deal with coming up, that the Lord is there in front of me. Yeah. So he's in front of you. That's why you went back to the house after you left for work the other day. And when you came back out and you decided to take another route, and then later you heard that on the normal route that you take, there was a six-car accident. He's in front of you. <laughs> I need God in front of me. Number, not only is he in front of you, uh, he is behind you. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's behind you. Yeah. Uh, 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 when you move in life, our peripheral vision allows us to see about 180 degrees and you know uh, uh, some of us claim to be like geckos and salamanders whose eyes move in different directions and not together uh, sometimes we can see a little bit further but there's one place that you can't see if you're moving forward in life and that's where you just came from i just said something up in here <laughs> He is behind you. And, 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 and when God is behind you, that means everything that is behind you has already passed. And if people look at your now and try to evaluate you now by what you were then, they're going to have trouble because they're going to run into God. <laughs> because when his blood covers you, it doesn't cover my now. It doesn't just cover my tomorrow. His blood covers my yesterdays. So if you go back to try to bother with somebody's yesterdays, you, don't, you won't confront me. It won't bother me because I don't have time to go look back at my yesterdays because I'm too busy praising God for my today and giving him the glory for what my future is going to be and trusting him that my past has already been covered by the blood. So whenever you go behind somebody, uh, watch this, it is because they are vulnerable, so you think, in the back. That's where we get, uh, Paul talks about the work of the flesh. He calls it backbiting. People who backbite 
backbite are cowards because they won't face you to your face, which is why they have to bite you in your back. But for you, believer, for you, beloved saint of God, for you that have been born again, uh, you don't have to worry about your back because God says, I got your back. Uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you remember some time when, when we, we were growing up on school and there were different altercations that needed to break out. And sometimes if you had an enemy that was a little bit too much for you to handle, if you had some good homeboys, if you had some good homegirls, hello, this before we got saved. You know, sisters do fight too. You do know that. Yeah, yeah, sisters sister do fight too. Uh, I, I, I was talking with my cousin, last, uh, my cousin in California last night, my uncle was rushed to the hospital. He had uh, emergency surgery, pacemaker and all of that. So family, we're praying for him. And, and, and so she said, you know, she said, you know, uh, Trump was doing all right until he stopped messing with black women. Oh, oh boy. He started messing with the black sister mayors over these cities and boy, he doesn't know what to do now. And that's why I thank God for the mayor of D.C. See, y'all keep saying y'all gonna tax us and not give us representation. You're not gonna make us the 51st state. Y'all been talking about that for 100 plus years. That's okay. I am the I be the mayor of this here city. So I'm gonna take the street you live on and I'm going to say black lives matter. This my street. <laughs> this my street. This, this my street here. This, this is us this street and says 70% of us is are in this city. This is our street. Because <laughs> it was started, she said he messed around and started bothering with black women. <laughs> you, you, you messed up now. You messed up now. Uh, we, we, he needed some brothers to really help him. <laughs> Brother, you, listen, you, you don't want a black, mm -mm, no, no. If, if a head go to work and hand on the hips, just submit. It's just easier. Makes life go better. Uh, just learn, yes, dear. Amen. Uh, yeah, that's all right. But you're going you, 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 you to learn it the hard way because uh, your wife could hardly talk. She didn't have so much liposuction and liposuction and face. All, I'm sorry. Let, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. <sighs> that was not kind. Help me, Holy Ghost. He's behind you. And so, before you get preoccupied with what has happened, yeah. you've got to remember that any man, any woman, any boy or girl who is in Christ Jesus yeah. is a new creature. What happens? The old things have passed away. And so, you can't look back that see something that's passed away. <laughs> Only God can see what is passed away. And all things are become new. So, saints of God, when you are resting and knowing that I am in his hands, watch this. I don't have to look back. I want you to see the illustration. I wish I, wish I had a little, a little, a little figurine. Uh, uh, let me use the anointing oil. That when I'm in his hands, if I'm looking forward, there's God. But if I'm looking backward, there is God. <laughs> so when I look back in my life uh, and I realize that God is not only in front of me, He's holding me in His hand, that He is also behind me. Uh, he has covered my path. Uh, I can rest content that no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against me I shall condemn. He's in front of you. He's behind you. But if you want to know the real good news, uh, it could be four points. I, I can't get to the part that he's in you. But I, I just want to deal with this part. He's, he's with you. <laughs> he's with you. And I, I, I need to specify that. And, and maybe in another preachment, we'll, we'll get to the part about he's in you. <laughs> we, we have been kind of talking about that over the last couple of weeks. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, and so now we need to understand positionally and ge geographically. He's in front of you. When, when you left the house, he's in front of you. Uh, when you left the house, he's behind you. Uh, when you left the house, he's with you. Uh, that emphasizes a couple of things. Uh, 
The hand of God represents his omnipotence. He is all-powerful. Uh, 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 the presence of God everywhere is, is his omnipresence is manifested because he is in front, he is behind, but he's also with us always at the same time. And, and, and so that demonstrates his omnipresence uh, because he knows what we ask, need, even before we ask. That demonstrates his what? His omniscience. He already knows. And, and that's why Jesus said, uh, uh, the sheep know my voice, but I know them. I know exactly what they need. I, I know exactly the excuses they're going to make. Uh, I know exactly their down sitting and their uprising. I know them and because I have perfect knowledge, because I am everywhere all at the same time, and because I have all power in my hand, I can be in front of them, I can be behind them. Yes, I'm also in them, but I'm also going to be with them. Now let me unpack that because this is the part I've been trying to get to. Sometimes when we're in crisis, like we're going through now, we want to ask God, where are you? As if God has a problem uh, being geographically located in the right place at the right time. <laughs> and I would admit, beloved, I don't know about you, but there, there have been a couple days in this thing <laughs> Uh, where I just said, God, where are you? I just, I know you're there, but I, I just need to hear. I just, I need to feel your presence. I need to know that you are with me. So not only is he in front of you, not only is he behind you, but he is with you. And these are the realities that we use to make the declaration, I'm in his hands. For some reason, we think that when we go through hard times, that God has left us. But nothing could be further from the truth. For you see, if you didn't have the hard times, you would not know some of the character of God. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? <laughs> he is in front of you. He is behind you. And point number three, he is with you. <laughs> he, he, he's with you. Uh, uh, if I had not been sick, then I would not have known that Jehovah is Rapha. And that he is a healer. If, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have known that. And so uh, I, while I was begging God to, Lord, I'm going into surgery in the morning. I need you to come with me. God says, I'm already in front of you. I'm, uh, I'm already behind you. I got you covered. And matter of fact, I'm in the operating room with you. I, I, I don't leave because... Uh, because humans want to operate on your body. I, I don't go anywhere. I don't disappear anywhere. And as a matter of fact, uh, the young man, you may have seen, uh, uh, you may have seen the painting of the operating room with the black physicians and black uh, nursing technicians. And you see the image of black Jesus standing over the operating table. That was done by a young man that grew up in my former church, Brother Leonard Freeman, who painted that. And you've seen a lot of his artwork. He's down in Houston, and I'm getting ready to commission him to do a couple of things uh, 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 for, for us here. And, 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 and so, wherever crisis is, the Christ is there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's what you need to understand. Now, now, if I was never broke and down to my last dime, I would never have discovered that he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides for me in the mountain. If I never got to a, 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 a negative emptiness in my life, I would never have discovered that he is El Shaddai. The God who is more than enough. And when all of my friends forsake me, when people turn their back on me, when folks that I thought I could count on walk away from me, the only one left standing in the room by my side is Jehovah God. Jehovah Sitkanu. Jehovah our banner. He is with you. And so, beloved, uh, we've been through funerals. 
We've been through financial difficulty, going through health challenge. That, that's on top of the already health challenges. And uh, it'll make you wonder, God, where are you? <laughs> um, as if God is lost. God is not lost. He challenges us as believers to seek me so that you'll see me being revealed in this current situation that you're in. I put you or allowed you to come into that situation so you could see who I am. God, we weren't able to bury our loved one. We weren't able to get there. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. If you never had anything to cry over, you will never experience the comfort of God. If you never had lost something, you'll never experience when God takes and brings you back double for what you lost. If you've never had a difficulty in your life, you don't need God's presence with you. And so if you're wondering where is God in this pandemic, just touch yourself and say, he woke me up this morning. I heard you say that, Brother Rodney. Yeah, he, 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 and he woke you up this morning, which means he's with you. You had some aches and pains, and maybe the body didn't work like it needed to work, but I am with you. I got some bad news on the phone late last night, uh, even about my uncle, but I, I called all my family members and started praying with them to let them know he is with you. And I, and I just got through texting family saying tomorrow's message, I'm in his hand. That's after I delivered it to my Union Bethel family. I'm in his hands. And when my cousin texts me immediately back and said, you need to pray for Hunk. And, and I said, don't worry about it. God's already covered. He's got the front. He's got the back. He's with us right now, and while I'm praying here in Fort Washington, God is with him in the operating room in Pittsburgh. And when I, by the time I talk to the next cousin on the phone, she was saying to me, he's out of surgery, has one artery with 90% blockage. They put a stent in. They put in a temporary pacemaker because at 84 years old, this man works out five days a week, yoga and everything else, and he's going to see him through. He is with, but, 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 if that crisis had never come up, I wouldn't know that God could answer prayer. And if every day was sunny, I would never know how to handle rain. <laughs> but I'm so glad that in my life uh, that I've been able to experience mountains and some valleys. <laughs> there have been some triumphs, but there have also been some tragedies. Uh, there's been some victories, but there have also been some defeats. And I don't know about you, but I don't mind talking about the times that I have not had victory. I don't know about you, but I don't mind talking about the times I've had to walk through valleys. Because I don't know about you. I know I get close to God on the mountain. But there's something about being in a valley. When I can't reach up to him, he reaches back down to me. And he holds me in the hollow of his hand. There's something that excites me about that. When I've gone through difficult situations. And the Lord keeps confirming that I am am with you always uh, even unto the end of the earth. Uh, that's why I like that promise that Jesus made. Uh, and the old saints used to take the King James Version uh, and they kind of worked that word low. Uh, low I am with you always. Uh, in other words, they would say, I'm already, I ain't, I don't know what high is like. Uh, he said, since I am low, uh, I'm low on the economic scale. Uh, I'm low on the job promotions 
scale. I'm low on, low on every scale. That's where Jesus is. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the earth. I'm so glad that God is with me. And because I've always been in his hand, he with me in the front, he with me in the back. He's with me wherever I go. I'm so glad, so glad, so glad he is with you. I'm in his hands. The other day on Friday morning, uh, Thursday night, we had our minister's meeting. Uh, when we got through praying, we prayed for you, Reverend Crump, uh, because you had been, uh, and you texted, said he was going to the hospital. Uh, and so we prayed for you uh, on Thursday night. Uh, I was up till one, two o'clock in the morning. Uh, and when I didn't hear your text back, uh, I said, well, I might have to be ready for the morning prayer. Um, and when I got up for the morning prayer, I was a few minutes late because uh, uh, I didn't know if, if you had uh, recovered to be in place. Uh, and so when I got on the prayer, I got up and came downstairs. Uh, and while I was sitting in my study praying uh, and fellowshipping with the people of God, uh, I was so thankful for the moment uh, because you never know when you pray with somebody uh, when you will hear their voice again. Uh, and then I said, since my day is going to be very long. Uh, let me just go back upstairs uh, and get a little bit of more sleep. Uh, and then my wife will go on to work. Uh, and then I can get up and start in my day. Uh, I had been asleep for about 30 minutes. Uh, and my wife came and touched my foot. Uh, and she said, I need you uh, to come downstairs with me. Uh, because there's water running in the basement. Uh, I thought I was in a dream uh, because that sleep was getting good to me. Uh, she touched me on my foot again uh, and she said, William, and I wish she called me William, and it ain't honey, indeed. This is serious. I need you uh, to come downstairs with me. Oh, you didn't get that. I need you to come downstairs with me uh, uh, because there's water flowing in the basement. Uh, well, I got up and I realized if there's water in the basement, uh, I don't need to put my good Pittsburgh Steelers slippers on. Uh, I just need some good old shower shoes. Uh, and I got on my shower shoes uh, and I came downstairs. Uh, mind you now, we only been in this house for 12 days. Uh, my wife's room had all been set up. Her studio was fabulous. And as I stepped down on that floor, I saw water rolling all the way across the room and all around to the outside of the door. Oh, and then and when, when I went into her area and I saw her standing in water because the sump pump had failed uh, uh, with all of the power outages and the shortages going on uh, and water was rolling. Uh, I saw my wife uh, and I saw the water uh, but I also as a husband uh, who covers my woman uh, I was looking on the walls uh, and realizing how many electronic devices uh, were already hooked up into the wall. Uh, I was very cool and very calm I didn't alert her about any danger. I didn't alert her about anything. I just said, baby, just stand right there. And as she was standing, I started going around and while I'm standing in water because I do understand the conductivity of electricity in water which is why brother Dana I don't fool with juice and I don't fool with water and as I begin to go around I 
just said to her, just be, it's going to be all right. I got this. And, and I started snatching plugs out the wall. While I was standing in water, I started snatching plugs out the wall. While I was standing in water, I started snatching plugs out the wall. Let me pause parenthetically to say, God is not afraid of your trouble. And God will walk with you in your trouble. And whatever is going to come your way, God knows how to pull the plugs out of the wall. Hey, I finally said to her, after she took all of our good towels and started throwing them on the floor, I realized, baby, you ain't made for this. I said, baby, why don't you just go on upstairs, get yourself ready to go to work. I got this. And she didn't realize that behind her where she was standing, there were several plugs in the water where she was standing that was still plugged up to the wall. I just asked her to move a little bit. My sheep know my voice and they follow me. I just said move and go upstairs. And then I went around to the rest of the house and started unplugging danger and started unplugging outlets. And then I started sweeping and mopping and sweeping and mopping. When she got ready to go, we prayed and I said, don't worry. I got this. You're in my hands and I'm in his hands uh, that's what God will do uh, he'll come to you uh, while you're in uh, your dangerous situation uh, the Bible says uh, you'll pass through the water and you won't drown uh, you'll walk through the fire and you won't burn uh, can I get a witness uh, can I get a witness? Uh, and when she left, uh, I said, don't worry about this. Uh, I got this. Uh, isn't that just like God? Uh, he'll come uh, rescue you out of trouble, send you on your way, uh, and then deal with the mess uh, that came up behind your life. Uh, is there anybody here who thanks God uh, that while I was in water, could have been electrocuted he is with me I was in a pandemic and it could have been me heading to the cemetery but he is with you declare today I'm in his hands I'm in his hands I'm in his hands hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. I'm in his hands. I'm in his hands. And a matter of fact, I'm so glad David said it this way. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. But I like that old song that said it this way. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, sister in his hands uh, he's got you and me brother in his hands uh, he's got everybody uh, in his hands uh, I'm so glad I'm so glad I'm so glad I'm in his hands uh, declare it with me today uh, I'm in his hands I'm in his hands I'm in his hands. 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 He's got me. My body, my soul, my spirit. My family, my finances, my home. Um, everything that pertains to me. He's got my future in his hands. He's got my past in his hands. He's got my now in his hands. He's got my tears in his hands. He's got my weakness in his hands. He's got my frailty in his hands. That's why late one Passover afternoon on a cross, on a hill far away with nails in his hand, 
with nails in his feet, uh, with a crown of thorns on his hand. Uh, uh, the final thing he said, uh, Father, into your hands uh, I commend my spirit. I'm in his hands. Declare it. Declare it wherever you are right now. I'm in his hands. He's in front of me. So when I sit in his hands, I look forward. I see his fingers. His, well, if I turn around and look back, I'm looking right at his face. I'm in his hands. Uh, wherever I'm going, I'm in his hands. Mm -hmm. I'm in his hands. I'm in his hands. I got to go to the, to the cemetery. I'm in his hands. I got to go in for a test. I'm, I'm in his hands. Uh, got water flowing in the basement with a whole bunch of electronic devices plugged up. I'm in his hands. I thought about it. I didn't scare her. I didn't tell her this. I thought about it after she left. I said, now what if both of them, in my mind, I thought to my mind, I said, what if both Pastor and First Lady had been electrocuted in the water? We'd have been in that house to the day. Y'all wouldn't have found us. <laughs> but we're in his hands. <laughs> we're in his hands. Where are you, God? No, it's not where is God, it's where are you? And I wanted to help you today to be reminded in your soul that you are in the hand of God. What does that mean? What about tomorrow? I don't know about tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised. But one thing I do know, if tomorrow comes for you, or tomorrow does not come for you, believer, you're in his hands. That's the reality. Um, uh, is a cure for COVID-19 coming? I pray so. Will more people die? Yeah, we're averaging almost 1,000 people a day now in this country dying. Uh, it's a sad reality. We're on our way to going 100% virtual because of that. And... Um, that, that's the reality, but for believers, no matter how you leave this earth, you're still in His hands. How many saints, preachers, we lost so many pastors uh, in this last four-month period, uh, almost every week, active pastors dying COVID-19. I'm talking about in the AME church. And so we know that uh, there is no difference that even we as believers have to die. But the good news is uh, not that, that we were born on whatever that date is that we were born. The good news is that we were born again so that when death in this world comes, We've already passed from death to life, and it has no victory over us. We're in his hands. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I've labored long in the word, and I pray that you have been encouraged to know that God is with you. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to share your word with your people. Pray that they have been encouraged and strengthened and blessed. And I thank you for it. And I give you praise and honor and glory uh, for the reality that today we can know for certainty that we're in your hands. And we make it personal. I'm in his hands. Um, for those who don't know your voice and are not following you, I pray for them that they might know you and that they might follow you and then you would give them eternal life. 
just like you've given to us already. We thank you for the certainty of eternal life, not because of us, but because we're in your hands. And we trust you because your hands will do what ours can't. And the wonderful promise is that the devil nor his demons nor spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness, nothing can snatch us out of your hand. you got a perfect track record. You have never lost anybody that's in your hand. Now, that's poetic justice. <laughs> and so we thank you for that today. We pray for the saints who've gotten a little weary as we continue to suffer and go through this season. We pray for endurance. We speak faith. And we encourage the people of God to know that no matter what they are facing, that they are in your hands. And so God, in every home today, in every household today, confirm your word with signs and wonders following. Heal, save, deliver, bless, restore, redeem in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. And God, wherever the saints are right now in their homes, in their living rooms, in their cars, maybe some may be at work, able to tune in. Holy Spirit, do what I can't do and none of us could do. Wherever we are, because you are omnipresent, God, just let us feel the blanket of your love right now. Ah, right now. In Akakik, in White Plains, in La Plata, in Waldorf, ah, in Clinton, in Brandywine, in Camp Springs, Oxen Hills, Fort Washington, Temple Hills, D.C., District Heights, Suitland, God, Upper Marlboro, Bowie, Touch, Touch, Montgomery County, Charles County, Touch, Touch. Let us be enveloped in your presence, God, to know that we're in your hands. We, 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 we do need to feel you today and know that you are with us. Help us. Touch in Georgia. Touch Mother Lord in South Carolina and Thelma Johnson in New York and Doris Haley and Jemisetta Haley. Touch in the name of Jesus. Touch uh, the Gloud family. Touch. Confirm your presence. Touch. Our social connection singer, Prima, touch. Hear the name, touch Mother Adams today. Touch, touch, touch in the name of Jesus. Marsha Russell, touch in the name of Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. Touch Linda Carter, Linda Perk today, our prayer warriors. Touch, touch, wherever we are. Right now, let us feel your presence. Wherever you are right now, in this moment, with just you and Jesus, I just want you to lift up your hands. If you're driving, you can't lift up your hands. You might need to pull to the side of the road. Just lift up your hands and let the Father's blanket of love just confirm that you are His and he is yours. Yeah, I'm his. He's mine. I'm his. He's mine. I'm in his hands. I want you to take that financial worry and just say, oh, I'm in his hands. Let me just drop it because it's going to drop in his hands. Take that loved one that you've been praying for, that father, that mother's going through health challenges and we pray for all of the caregivers that have to offer care to their aging parents. God, we pray for your healing touch. We pray for your comfort. Let them know that they are in your hands. Yeah. 
for those members who can't go into nursing homes to see mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles. They can only touch them through a window, but let them know today they're all in your hands. 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 We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Here go. Mm. He will. His hand on me. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Brother Chris, just sing that for a minute while we're in this worship moment. It's up high, for we will provide. Just know he has his hands on you, has his hands on you. He said, you see, you cry, he's holding you. Yes, Lord. So lift your hands up high, for he will, he will provide. Just know he has his hands on you. Oh, come on, give him glory and praise in his presence today. His hands are on you. His hands are on you, and you are in his hands. Beloved, if you were touched by this message and you prayed that prayer and you know that you have surrendered to the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ, we celebrate you giving your life to Christ and thank God for you today. And so many have confessed Christ even in this time of virtual church. And then you may need a church home. Uh, we're all virtual now. And so not confined by geographic boundary or border. And so if you need a church home, uh, give me a call. 301-372-6036. Let us know. We'll be in touch with you. Our team will minister to you. And uh, you send me an email, pastorc at uvame.org. Hey, I gave my life to Christ. And I want to join the church and become a part of this family of believers wonderful community of family believers and you can grow in the things of God in this place and so we praise God for you we'll ask our assistant pastor of the Brandywine campus uh, uh, Reverend Crump to come to lead us in our time of giving and I'll be back to you at the end I'm in his hands Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise for that word on this morning. I'm in his hands. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to know that we are in the hands of the Lord, and that is a blessing, especially in times like these. Thank you, Pastor, for that word, just for confirming with us and letting us know that we are in his hands, and we are in the safest and best place that we can be. Now, as we come, Union Bethel, into our streaming audience, into our Facebook audience, is now is a time we've come to give, and we come to lift up our offerings and give unto the Lord as we come. You can give by Givelify. You can use your envelope 
or you can use a Givelify again. You can go to Realm and you can give by the Union Bethel website. So please prepare your offering. Amen. And you know, we, we normally do at Union Bethel. Stand wherever you are in your home. Amen. Stand where you are as we come to give. Even though we're virtual. Amen. We still going to do as we do. Praise the Lord because Union Bethel still is Union Bethel. So stand wherever you are. Hold your offering up that we might bless it. Hallelujah. And then let's get ready to give. Fathers, we come, we do thank you now and praise you for this opportunity and time to give. God, we pray and thank you that you've blessed us, that we might be a blessing. And God, even though some of our resources may have uh, decreased a little bit, you still are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. And God, even if the woman, God, that gave out of all that she had, you blessed her because she gave more than those that had more. And so God, we now thank you for the blessing, us, the giver, and the gift. God, so now we thank you we honor you we bless you and we glorify you thank you for the gift thank you for the giver god let us not miss what we give unto you we don't give out of necessity nor out of grudgingly but god we come cheerfully giving because you have blessed us abundantly we thank you and we love you in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen thank you so much We would like to recognize Union Bethel's next Facebook Top Fan of the Week, Brother Donald Anderson. The top fans are chosen by Facebook algorithm based on their likes, comments, and shares over Pacific time. We thank all of you for your engagement on the Union Bethel Facebook page and encourage you to continue to be a social disciple in liking, commenting, and sharing with friends and family. Our Second Episcopal District Servant Leaders, Bishop James L. Davis and Supervisor Arilla Davis, are hosting Washington's 70th Session Virtual Annual Conference on July 27th and 28th. Sign up by visiting the Second Episcopal District's website at www.ame2.com. The Outreach Ministry is accepting August share orders. Your orders are due by Sunday, August 9th. The menu options include the Value Box, the Hamburger Box, the Labor Day Grill Special, and the Summer Fruit Box. Please submit your order request to email address ubameoutreach at gmail.com or call telephone number 301-372-372. 2969 to place your order. Union Bethel's live streaming and video on demand services are now available to watch on a new platform called From the Pulpit. Download From the Pulpit on Apple and Android phones and tablets as well as Roku. From the Pulpit is coming soon to Fire TV. You can also watch on www.fromthepulpit.tv from your web browser. Emotional and spiritual support is available through the Union Bethel Congregational Care Ministry. Contact Rev. Kim Hutchison at email address khutchison at ubame.org or call the church office at 301-372-372 6036 for additional guidelines and information. We are strong advocates concerning safety instructions and guidelines set by our government and medical professionals. Please consider others and yourselves when venturing out to public locations. We continuously pray for your health and welfare. Now here's Pastor C with our closing blessings and benediction. blessed in the ministry of the word today to be reminded that I'm in his hands yeah all that stuff God's going to take care of that all the political social economic he is faithful but in the midst of all of that be reminded this week when you go out you sit in his hands he's in front 
If you turn and look back, he's behind you. And wherever you go, he's with you. That's his promise to us. That I'll be with you even until the end of the age. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you the shalom of God, both now henceforth and forevermore. People of God said, Amen. Till we meet again, remember, you're in his hands. Thank you for tuning in to our worship service. Hope you were spiritually fed by God's spoken word. Share God's word with your friends, family, and community. Have a blessed and glorious week. Continue to follow us on our website, From the Pulpit, YouTube, and like us on Facebook. <laughs>